the European indices, we'll look at the DAX, the AEX and the FTSE and all pretty much the same and the European markets have been weaker than the US markets for quite some time. With the US markets we're still looking for this intermediate wave 3 top here where these markets um, have already got that in play here. Um, so with that we've been looking at uh, the moves down here with uh, the European markets as an impulse wave meaning five waves and then we've been looking for a corrective wave here and these certainly do look like corrective waves um, because uh, an impulse wave that gives the direction of the markets there you know they don't really overlap each other in their corrections you know and that can be to the downside as well as so to speak but corrective patterns are quite easy to focus on because they pretty much start to overlap their tops and and so on you know a bit like this they all the the tops and bottoms and overlap so you get those sort of overlapping this is a corrective pattern here a bullish corrective pattern because it's moved up this way it's got overlapping wave structures so it can continue to move up and this is what we've got here we've got a whole lot of overlapping uh, wave structures in here um, um, so we know that it's corrective um, so that means it's just a continuation pattern so once it's completed it will move down with the DAX here of course we've got the elephant in the room here which is the 13,000 here and it's always nice to be um, I'm a bit of a scurdy cat so I always like to be on the right side at the right time uh, what does that mean being on the right side of the right time it means being on the right side of the closest largest number um, and having that um, you know secure on that side so on this side here we'd be looking for the 13,000 as a retested resistance of course so I think I might just go straight to the hourly chart and pick up this um, this pattern here so we looked at this being an impulse wave of five waves down no overlapping wave structures within that but this one here you can see that there's there's overlapping wave structures here um, you know in terms of uh, trading short here you can also see that in the reality is is that well you know the market is is supported by the 13,000 isn't it so that means that it's at higher risk and, and you know is on is on the on the bullish side um, the Elliott uh, patterns are telling us that we will be moving lower um, but still it's always nice to be sort of you know uh, as sure as one can be um, with all of these the other point to this is that um, the move up that we we're looking for this rectangle box here was the 50 and the 61.8 percent um, so we're at the lower end of that and that's kind of fine and um, we do have a pattern here as in terms of an A wave, a B wave as a triangle pattern uh, and then a C wave in five waves so normally the C wave would equal the A wave here and it's the B wave that's got, us, got quite complex here so it's simple, complex, simple and that's a little bit like wave three, uh, waves twos and fours if wave two is simple then wave four will be complex and so on um, what we talked about here was that um, uh, last time I'm sure I would have spoken about it because I just tell the same story most of the time but basically we're looking for um, the 13,000 to become the retested resistance here so that means that you know even if we get I'll just go over this even if we get you know this will move down it will bounce back up here of course uh, could even move up to this point um, but eventually when it the ball bounces with lower highs and eventually moves through here it's still the retest here that we want so the spike is only part of the pro process is only part of the setup but the retest is more important was well, as important um, and then if that fails that goes down there so it's important to have that reference point low here because all of these have been reference point lows but they've never come back down and you know never come back down and given us that that bearish thing through that you know even this one here you know so um, even this one so this is what we'd be looking for that's what keeps that retest here the reference point and the retest of, of, on that level is the, is the thing that keeps us safe so that's what we'll be looking for there these green lines here they will probably for the optimal uh, short trade position so um, gleaning you know if you normally trade let's just say you trade three contracts you know um, then 
um, you wouldn't sell all the three here. You'd sell one here and, you know, one on the retest here or whatever, and then, then under here as well, and, and then continue to build on that downside. So you don't just go shoveling it all in at one in one space, not when you're looking at building into a trend. So then that's what we're doing, really, you know. I mean, this... Um, when I said here A equals wave C over here, just as a rule of thumb, you know, as a guide stick, don't take it too too personally and accurately and so on. But that, that means that this A wave here being in five waves, w this A wave here will equal wave C over here when, um, when it comes into play. So that's something that we can look at here. So we can go to here, roughly, um, take that, just move that over. And put that here so we could be look and then we drift over to the closest largest number and we can be looking at 12,500 the other points that um, we need to make in here as well let me just clean these up a little bit that could also be wave two up there so I'm not um, uh, just clean my mess up here chuck it under the bed <laughs> um, the other important point here that I need to make is that the 2,900, 12,900, it's going to be important. We could get a retest back to there and go back again. Um, but the 12,8 here is also important that we could also get a retest back here as well before moving further down. I'm going to the extreme there. It might just go to the 9, but that 8 is really important here. Um, it's going to take this market a little while to actually turn the market from being supported at this number to resistance here. You need to make a choice right from the get-go how you're going to handle this situation here. Are you going to, you know, let it allow it to fluctuate? Are you going to take profit right on the eight or very close to it um, and then look for the bounce to get back in and so on and so on? I have to say, though, if you're not um, experienced in moving in and out of the markets in a very practical, logical um, balance point of view way then it's best just to stay in there because it's very difficult sometimes to get back into um, into the trade again you know you know I'm not you know that anyway so <clears throat> Okay, I'll just leave that mess. I'm going to go to the AEX, which is really much the same as well, as you may know. So on the daily chart uh, here, we've got the first impulse wave down, and we're, look we're looking for the B wave to move back, and we're looking for the C wave to move down here. And this is another thing, too, that you need to ask yourself. I mean, the, third, the three here, coming into group one, the 500 is a major level, and these are minor levels, one, two, and three, then five and eight. Um, this is the Fibonacci numbers as price ratio. But all the way down here, these numbers 3, 2 and 1 are going to be, um, you know, they're going to be, you know, tough little stone walls. They're going to be, um, you know, we're going to see the market bounce around them. So you also need to um, understand, um, you know, how you're going to handle them. Are you going to stand aside and, you know, allow it to bounce around? Um, or are you going to get in there close and... Um, you know, have a go at it. So, um, yeah. But anyway, the next little thing here really is is um, is a break. You know, through here, and um, the other point too is the five forty here. It's it's we can use that number. It's playing out well here. So, on the hourly chart here. <clears throat> so from the top here, we've got uh, five waves down here. Um, and then we've got our A and our B and our C wave here. And that pulled back nicely into the box here, into the 50 and the 61.8%. And now we're starting to see uh, this move down through here. But also, too, like the DAX, all these spikes here, they haven't really been, you know, we didn't have a fail. You know, they, they, when, when they moved up. Uh, you know, they didn't, these are reference points and you know, they didn't retest and come back down. But that'd be the same thing that you're looking for here as well, though. So, um, you know, this could, this could come down here again to here, right? And it could go, um, just, I've got too many objects on the chart and the charting programs asking me to um, remove some. So, 
<clears throat> this could actually move back up into this space here onto this trend line through here, for example, before moving down again. So just be mindful uh, of, of that. Um, I'll look at these counts a little bit uh, later on, but here I can see we've got one, two, three, four, and five here, and this fifth one's not finished, so it could come down a bit further. Um, and then have an ABC back to the 61.8% of this move uh, here as well. Um, so yeah, that what I talked about on the DAX here um, is really important. Um, you need that retest to come into, into play there to get that. Um, yeah, and the FTSE, it's in the much same boat as well, but a bit more bearish. So, um, yeah, I don't need to go to the daily chart because you kind of know the story. It's the same thing though, we've got the move down here as wave one or wave A, an A and a B and a C back here um, in, into our area here. And we, we called this top in and we started to look at this move to um, the downside uh, here further. And So um, the main point here is that is the 7,300, because the 300 is part of a minor group one, so 100, 200, and 300. So we're going into minor group one here, and we're also going to see bounces as well through here. And um, with all of this here, let's just... This will be, that will be roughly the 50-60% retracement level from that height to the 7,300 here. So it's probable that, I just need to talk about strategy here really, um, it's possible that we can get something like this before we move down again here. So it's something that you'll need to accommodate. The other point here is that um, if I'm wrong and we don't get a strong bounce here, then we need to do the same thing that we're looking at with the with the other markets as well, in that if we get a move um, through here and this pulls back up here, then the reference point here is extremely important to um, to, to uh, for, for adding positions here as well. Um, we should be able to leave if you're short here then we should be able to leave this as the stop here now for this. So whatever you do, that's because that would be above the 61.8% mark there. I'll just need to check that just to make sure. Yeah, okay, that's a bit So that stop there to be to to have short trades in this market for the for the move down, that's really where they've got to be. Um, and then let's just have a look at the bounce here. But certainly, look if that seven thousand three hundred becomes a retested resistance, then you need to be you need to have short positions in the market at that point. Okay. Um, all right. Well, um, that's about it really. I think we sort of covered that. So we're on the short side now for these, which is great. Okay, cheers.